Hey, welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor, Paul Markle, and today we want to acknowledge our new homeroom sponsor. Uh, the new homerooms are going to be brought to you by Ammoland.com. For all your information and daily news, gun related, you can go to Ammoland.com. Now, we got a pretty huge response from the last homeroom we did where we discussed the ammo shortage. But, like everything in the internet world, there are still people out there that are, I don't know, conspiracy theorists or what have you, and, and they just can't believe that the explanation that I offered was that simple. It's got to be something else. It has to be some kind of grand conspiracy. Okay, so, all right, for those of you who don't have a tinfoil hat on right now, let me break it down for you like this. All right, first of all, since we got into the global war on terror about hmm, 12 years ago, the United States Army and de facto Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, all that, have been consuming a tremendous amount of ammunition. Okay, when you're in an active shooting war, the Army is going to be buying up a ton of ammo. And everyone's like, well, doesn't the Army buy it just from the specific Army plant? Yes and no. They have dedicated military plants, but the truth of the matter is, is those plants can't produce small arms ammunition, 5.56, 9mm, and so forth. They can't produce it fast enough, so what the Army does is they contract out. They contract people like Black Hills Ammunition, like ATK, who owns Federal and CCI and so forth, and they get small arms ammo for them. So what does that mean? Well, it means if Black Hills and Winchester and ATK and all the and Remington, if they're making and selling tens of thousands and millions of rounds of ammunition to the government, well, a lot of their annual production is going over there. So there's less for you. Now, in uh, 2008, 2009, when the current usurper took office, people started what? freaking out. And what did they do? They started buying guns and buying ammo. And so what you had back in, you know, 08, 09, was you had the ammunition industry that was already taxed by the needs and desires of the U.S. military. Then they became even more burdened by the uptick in sales from civilians who wanted to buy it now. They needed to get it. They're like, ooh, I better buy ammunition. Okay, And that tapered off a little bit in 2010 uh, and 11, but it never, never went back down to where it was in like 05, 03, 1999. It never got all the way back down there. And most ammunition manufacturers, and I say, when I say I talk to ammunition makers, I'm not just walking up to them as a dude on the street. Your favorite professor, Paul Markle, I've been playing this game for over 20 years now. I have personal relationships with the people at Winchester and Remington and Black Hills and Corbon and so forth. You know, I had one person accuse me of just, well, that's, that's, all they, that's what they told you. Like, these people I've been friends with for 12, 15, 20 years are going to lie to me just to hide the truth, you know, that they're really hoarding the ammunition for the alien invasion forces to come. I, I don't know what you're thinking. But um, the truth is, is these manufacturers really never got caught up from the last big bubble. There was a huge spike, and they are trying to get caught up from that spike, and then in November of 2012, what did we do again, America? We stuck our heads up our butts and, you know, um, you, you call it what you will. So now there's another spike. So the ammunition makers who had never gotten caught up from the first spike now hit a second spike. And don't forget your wonderful U.S. government and the Department of uh, Homeland Security they went ahead and threw in a several hundred million order of small arms ammunition too. So if you're federal, if you're Winchester, if you're Remington, you know, you've got 300 million rounds ordered back order already from the U.S. government. Let me put it to you like this. Okay, at one time we had X, okay, and X rec uh, represents the amount of ammunition that they were building on a regular basis. They're building X ammunition because they had an average of X customers. Okay. And my kid, I was talking to my son uh, who's in his 20s about this situation. He goes, Dad, it's just basic economics. Why don't people get that? Okay. Well, then you go from X to Y. So you went from X purchase, you still have X manufacturing, you go from X to Y, and you're like, okay, so they bump 
their manufacturing up to Y. Well, by, before they can even get full production in Y, you've got Z. Now you have purchaser Z. Folks, when you have every one of your neighbors, every person you know who owns a gun, ran out and bought a gun and bought ammunition in the last month, there's going to be, you just can't, it's impossible for a manufacturer when you have a 1,000% increase in sales, you just can't walk out onto the factory floor and say, hey guys, uh, I know you're working seven days a week, you know, uh, three shifts a day, but uh, what we want you to do is go ahead and increase your production 1,000%. That's just not how it works. That'd be like going to General Motors and saying, well, we know you built 300,000 cars last year, but tell you what, we want you to build 1.2 million uh, in the next six months. Can you go ahead and knock those out for us? No, they can't do it. They just cannot physically produce the ammunition that is being demanded right now by the American gun power. And that's all there is to it. There's no grand conspiracy. There's no alien invasion. They're not selling it all to the government and the government's hoarding it somewhere. It's just that they cannot produce it. You've got to build ammunition out of components. You've got to build it out of lead, brass, copper, and so forth. And all of those things have been in high demand for the last 10 years. The prices of precious metals are through the roof and they have been through the roof uh, for at least since 2000. So uh, there is no grand conspiracy. The ammo makers are making it as fast as they can. And if you waited and didn't get your ammunition, well, sorry, but patience is your new virtue. Now, for all things student of the gun, you want to watch the show, you want to take some training, you want to read articles, go to studentofthegun.com. And don't forget about our friends, ammoland.com.